endless. Oxygen's the best adrenal support nutrient, and it's the best way to lower your blood pressure. Now, I've said it a, a, a million times probably. Get yourself a, a blood pressure monitor. Anybody who's on a prescription drug or multiple prescription drugs or who's dealing with a chronic degenerative health condition needs a home blood pressure monitor so that you can see for yourself the impact of your lifestyle and dietary choices on your blood pressure, of the way we conduct our lives on, on how, how, how our hypertension shows up. It's not a drug issue. It's not a doctor issue. It's a lifestyle and diet issue. And this is good news. I'm not here to beat anybody up. This is great news because what it says is we can control something as fundamental as our circulatory system health and our blood pressure health ourselves with no middleman. Medicine means middleman. A medicine is a middleman between us and our own divine healing uh, powers. By controlling your respiration, blowing off carbon dioxide, which is just as important as getting oxygen in, is the best way, the easiest way, the most non-toxic way, the simplest way to lower your blood pressure. And if you have a blood pressure cuff, you can observe it for yourself. I know I've said it so many times, but I'll say it again. We've got a lot of new listeners. Get a blood pressure cuff. It costs you 80 bucks for an easy-to-use one. You get it off Amazon or off the Internet. You just stick your arm in the, in the, in the cuff, wrap it up, and press a button. And then just sit there. And 30 seconds later, you'll know your blood pressure. So if you've got a degenerative health crisis and you're on a medication, if you're diabetic, if you're overweight, if you're not even, don't even know you have a de degenerative health crisis, you're just concerned about aging, get yourself a blood pressure cuff, take your blood pressure, then practice slow, deep breathing for three minutes, four minutes, slowly in through the nose, 15 seconds in, slowly out through the nose, 15 seconds out, do it for two or three minutes or four minutes or five minutes, and then take your blood pressure. Watch what happens. Take your blood pressure, then go take a hot shower, and then take your blood pressure again. Watch what happens. Take your blood pressure, fill up the tub with hot water, go sit in a hot bath for whatever, 20 minutes, half an hour, come out and take your blood pressure again. These are all ways you're gonna lower your blood pressure naturally without prescription drugs, without doctors, without Obamacare, and without toxicity. All right, there's wonderful nutrients for the adrenal glands. I talked about B5 yesterday. I love this stuff, man. Pantothenic acid, B5, vitamin B12, also stupendously important for the adrenal glands. Zinc, iodine, vitamin C. These are all incredibly important nutrients for the adrenal glands. Anything you could do to stabilize blood sugar is important for the adrenal glands. Of course, your electrolytes are also important for your adrenal glands. Then there's two hormone-like substances you can buy in the drugstore or the health food store, I should say, or the drugstore or on the internet. Hormone-like substances. Actually, they are hormones that are also wonderful for the adrenal glands. They help relax the body. And everybody needs to know about these two hormones, especially as we get older. They're readily available, they're easy to utilize, they're cheap, and they got wonderful health benefits. There's the music, and I apologize because I wanted to get to some phone calls, but we didn't do it. All right, well, we'll get to you when we come back from our break. Hang tight. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. On the bright side, I am Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. All our programs are archived. If you miss a program, we've got four-plus years of wonderful health information, information that you don't hear on other radio programs. I'm a biochemistry geek, and my mission in life is to help everybody understand their own biochemistry as simple and as easy, uh, as simply and as easily as they can. And that's what I try to do every day on the Bright Side is try to take biochemistry, how our bodies work, and simplify it so it's palatable and digestible and easy for us to understand. If we don't under understand how our bodies work at the most fund fundamental levels, at the biochemistry level, and it's not that complicated, if we don't understand it, we become victims. We become p sheep led to slaughter, and that's really what our medical paradigm has done to us. This is why we've got more doctors per capita than any other culture in the world, but we are simultaneously among the sickest cultures on the planet. And when it comes to 
uh, the industrialized nations, uh, when it comes to the wealthy nations of the West, the United States, well, maybe among or maybe the wealthiest nation in the world, but we are far, far, far from the healthiest between life expectancy and, and infant mortality and obesity and diabetes. It's almost endless how sick we are in terms of statistics. And in large part, this is because we've got a medical model that does not serve us, that abuses us. Yes, abuses us, exploits us, leverages us for financial gain. And we, don't have, we can't blame them. We've got to blame ourselves because we're complicit. We've got a medical model that says you can do whatever the heck you want in terms of your lifestyle. And forget nutritional supplements because that's just wacky. But our prescription drugs and our surgical procedures... And our diagnostics, oh, that's really where it's at for when it comes to health. No, it's not. It's manipulative. It's evil. And we can't blame them. It's like the old story of the scorpion and the frog, you know? The scorpion gets on the frog's back, and the scorpion asks to get on the frog's back, and the frog says, no, I'm not going to let you on my back. You're going to bite me. I'll be, I have to be then stupid. And the scorpion says, I'm not going to bite you. And the frog, the frog goes into the water and says, all right, scorpion, I'll give you a ride. Scorpion gets on the frog's back, and the frog goes in the water. And sure enough, halfway, into the, halfway through the river, the scorpion bites the frog. And the frog goes, you stupid scorpion, you bit me. What would you do that for? Now I'm going to drown, you're going to drown? That was the dumbest thing you could have done. What were you thinking? The scorpion goes, I'm a scorpion. That's what I do. You know, scorpions bite. Doctors cut. And drug. And have medical procedures, it's not their fault. This is how they're trained. It's our fault for being complicit. By listening to the bright side, by listening to this program, by checking out the archives, by beginning to employ some of these super common sense logical techniques like deep breathing and massages and hot tubs and changing the way you eat and nutritional supplementation, we can stay away from the doctor's office, we can stay out of the medical model, and we can take care of all our, ourselves. No middleman required, no medicine man required. A medicine man is a middleman. Medicine is a middle, a, a middle agent. It's a, an insinuating agent that sticks itself between us and our healing properties. Do you need medicine, by the way? Yes, occasionally you do. Pain pills, antibiotics, occasionally you need medicine. And even if you have some kind of long-term de degenerative crisis, sometimes you need medicine too. But your main object, if you're on a prescription drug, folks, your main object should be to wean yourself off of that, to figure out how to wean yourself off of that. Nobody, 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 this is a pharmacist speaking now, nobody should be on a prescription drug for a long term. That's not the role of prescription drugs. That's what they were told. Oh, you're going to be on this medicine the rest of your life. No. If you're on a medicine the rest of your life, what that means is that you're not participating, or you're not being taught how to participate in your own health non-medically. Anyway, time to hit our phones. 844-236-6010. Angel in Ohio, what's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hello? Hello, Angel. What is up? Uh, yeah, in the 70s and early 80s, there was a lot of talk about B-17, Laetrile. Mm. Yes, ma'am. And I've not heard about that for a long time. I was wondering, uh, is there any efficacy in I, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. It's more, you know, it's a drug, although it's a vitamin drug. Oh, it is? Well, no, it's not really a drug. It's a vitamin drug. It's not regulated. It comes from apricot seeds and bitter almonds. You know, we talk on this program about how plants and how seeds don't want to be eaten. This is the problem with gluten. You know, gluten and laetrile have a lot in common. They're both phytoweaponry. They're plant weapons. Laetrile is a toxic compound. I believe it's a cyanide-based compound uh, that's... Uh, I'm pretty sure, well, maybe it's not, I take that back. I don't think there's cyanide in there. But there, it's a, a medicinal compound that's found in almonds and apricot seeds. And uh, it's got anti-cancer properties. But the thing is, cancer lives in a cancer environment. As long as you have your cancer environment going, you may temporarily do something for your, for your, uh, for your tumor or for the car carcin uh, uh, cancer. But as long as you have the environment that's conducive to cancer, it's coming back. So I'm not buying it. Yeah, you might get some temporary benefits, but as long as you've got the toxic environment that's conducive to cancer, you're going to have the cancer. That's why you don't kill cancer. Cancer is us. Cancer is not an enemy. It's not an alien that has come from another galaxy and invaded your body. It's your own cells, except it's your own cells that are at wit's end, that don't know what else to do, so they start dividing rapidly. In order for cells to grow appropriately so we can actually have a body, a lot of things have to go right. Growth is regulated. 
how cells grow is controlled. You can't have overgrowth. You can't have undergrowth. You have to have just right growth. When a cell doesn't get the nutrients it needs over the course of decades, when a cell doesn't get the oxygen it needs over the course of decades, when a cell is swimming in toxicity, from sugar especially, over the course of decades, it doesn't know what else to do, so it switches into this primitive way of being, this primitive way of existing where it divides really rapidly and doesn't do anything else but divide and suck up nutrients, and that's what we call cancer. So the way you deal with cancer is by changing the environment of the body. Something as simple as stopping eating can have a beneficial effect on carcinogenesis. Fasting, just Google fasting and cancer. Fasting can even help your chemotherapy work better. So I'm not a big believer in any of these chemo, in any of these non-medicinal killing cancer strategies. Now, if you have cancer and you don't know what else to do, try the Laetrile, and nobody should be telling us, the FDA shouldn't be telling us what we can do and what we can't do, but your real, uh, the real way you want to work with cancer, first of all, you want to prevent it by keeping the blood clean, but if you have it, you want to figure out how to clean the blood using fasting, using oxygen, using nutrition, using mental and emotional, and yes, even spiritual strategies. I'm going to have a guest on in a couple of weeks um, and this is a, a good friend of mine, and she's actually a physician, right? She had metastatic breast cancer a couple of years ago. Guess what? She didn't want to do chemotherapy. She's a doctor. Go figure, right? She didn't want to do chemotherapy. She knows what it is. So she, you know what she did? She started using spiritual techniques. She started using nutritional supplementation. She changed the way her diet. She changed her diet. This is stage three metastatic breast cancer that this woman had. All right? I saw her a couple of weeks ago. She looks awesome three years after, guess what? It's in remission. No drugs, no Laetril, only spiritual, mental, emotional techniques, nutritional strategies, dietary strategies, exercise, just common sense ways that we take care of the body. We'll have her on the program here, hopefully in a couple of weeks. Uh, I hope I helped, uh, Angela. La I'm not buying Laetril. That's probably why you haven't heard it. Thanks for calling. All right, hang tight. If you're on hold, we'll get to you when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. From, uh, from the journal Cancer, how spiritual beliefs relate to cancer patients' physical, mental, and social well-being. Patients report greater overall. Patients who report greater overall religiousness and spirituality also reported better physical health, greater ability to perform their usual daily tasks, and fewer physical symptoms of cancer and treatment. This is not airy fairy, folks. This is from the, the Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa. Quote, these relationships were particularly strong in patients who experienced greater emotional aspects of religion and spirituality, including a sense of meaning and purpose in life, as well as a connection to source larger than oneself, unquote, said lead author Heather Jim, Ph.D. of the Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, uh, Tampa, Florida. Folks. This idea of the emotional nature and the mental nature and the spiritual nature needs to be addressed if we're not healthy. And it's not airy-fairy, Boulder, Colorado, hippie talk. This is hardcore biochemistry. Thank you to Gina, who has sent me an email informing me that, yes, indeed, there is cyanide in vitamin B17. I thought there was. Thank you, Gina. Appreciate that. Gina's one of my super smart listeners esthetician and biochemist and very pretty woman. Thank you so much, Dean. I appreciate that. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Dan in Missouri. What's going on? How you doing, buddy? Dan, Dan Moe. It says on my chart here, on my Hello? screen, Dan Moe. Yes. yes, Dan. Uh, yes, I. Um, thanks for uh, taking my call. Sure. I had a question. Um, former competitive athlete, uh, currently uh, still active in sports. Uh, the nature of my call is regarding uh, just cartilage, bone, and uh, regeneration of that uh, Got as it. well. Yes. I'll preface, if I could, uh, sure. I also changed my diet from meat. I don't eat, eat any meat, and okay. I'm concerned that that may have something to do with it as no. well. No, it doesn't. 
Now, meat, in fact, can be a problem. As, as, good as, as much protein value as we get from meat, there's inflammatory factors in meat. If you're not eating organic and hormone-free, then you have to deal with all the toxins they give the, the animals. Even organic meat, you don't know what really, because there's toxins in the air. There's toxins in the water. So you don't really know uh, when it comes to or, or, 